I want to start this video with a few words from Peter McCoy's book. Out of the 15 million animal species living on Earth, approximately 6 million are fungi, of which only 75,000 or 1.5% have been classified, only some of the 1.5% have been well studied, less than 100 have been integrated into our lives, only two dozen are grown by humans, and only seven species are industrially grown. In his book, Peter calls mycology the abandoned megascience. I say all of this so that you can just imagine how little humanity knows about mushrooms. Often information about the edibility of mushrooms comes down to observational experience and chance, and conclusions are drawn from the result of, if someone ate it and didn't get poisoned, then it's an edible mushroom. I just want to remind fans of quiet hunting once again about the importance of knowledge and extreme caution when you want to collect and eat wild mushrooms. I won't talk about poisonous mushrooms in this video, but I do want to talk about edible or conditionally edible mushrooms that can cause severe poisoning. I'll start with poison Paxillus, or Paxillus involutus. Until the end of the last century, this mushroom was considered a good, tasty, edible mushroom. But now, in new reference books, it is listed as a deadly, poisonous mushroom. It was this mushroom that poisoned and killed a German mycologist, Julius Schaefer, in 1944, 17 days after eating the poison Paxillus due to kidney failure. In spite of this information, fans of this forest delicacy continue to collect and eat it in areas like Russia or some European countries. Many mushroom lovers believe that this mushroom can be cooked well enough within an hour or so and can be eaten. An interesting fact is that the poison of this mushroom has not yet been isolated and its formula is unknown. It is assumed that the poisoning is caused by an antigen present in the mushroom that can cause an autoimmune reaction of the body against its own red blood cells, ultimately leading to kidney failure. Another interesting fact is that Pexillus is capable of accumulating radioactive isotopes and heavy metals hundreds of times higher than the concentration of these same substances in the surrounding soil. Another very tasty and edible mushroom that has also recently begun to show its tricks is the canary trick or Tricholoma equestri. In medieval times in France, this mushroom ended up only on the tables of the nobility, leaving other lowly mushrooms like bovine belete for the peasants. But at the end of the last century, information about poisonings, even fatal ones, began to arrive from European countries. Repeated consumption of the canary trick is thought to cause muscle damage or acute rhabdomyolysis, myoglobinuria, and renal failure. Some mycologists admit that the poisoning was caused by the interaction of tricholoma equestri with medications taken. Some others suggest poisoning by another similar species or by genetic or physiological characteristics of some people, since they did not find any toxins in this mushroom. People continue to collect and eat this delicious mushroom to this day. Another edible mushroom that suddenly turned out to be responsible for the death of 17 people from Japan, out of a total of 59 who were poisoned, is angel's wings or Pleurocybella porogens. This mushroom has always been considered a good edible mushroom and is still eaten in many places. But in 2004, something happened in Japan and 17 people with an average age of 70 years and kidney problems died with a diagnosis of encephalopathy. A similar incident occurred again in Japan in 2009 with an elderly man with diseased kidneys who also died after eating angel's wings. The poison has not yet been definitively determined. It is believed that this is a previously unknown, unstable amino acid that causes demyelination of the brain and leads to encephalopathy within 30 days after consuming these mushrooms. Angel's wings have been shown to accumulate high levels of cyanide. This is the estimated formula for the suspected amino acid. We can speculate for a long time about what could have actually caused these deaths, but I have not found any information about these mushrooms, how they were cooked before consumption, or the ecological zone within which they were collected, nor a list of the medications that these people were being treated with, nor what happened to the survivors after the poisoning. I can only hope that someday I will find out the answer to what could have happened to these people, but for now I recommend that you and I be careful with the above mushrooms and avoid consuming them. But don't get too excited, my list isn't done yet. 
You think that you can't get poisoned by porcini mushrooms? Oh, but I bet you can. You can also poison yourself with chanterelles and lactarius. Just imagine the situation. One unlucky mushroom picker goes on a camping trip and finds a huge king mushroom. It's quite ripe, but absolutely clean, without worms, and has a good smell. Would you throw such a handsome porcini mushroom away? And so the mushroom picker thought to himself, It seems like I've eaten these mushrooms before, and it's known that porcini mushrooms can even be eaten raw. What can go wrong? This mushroom won't last until I get home because it's hot and rainy. And so that mushroom picker thought they had enough reason to throw this mushroom onto the frying pan, cook it up, and eat it. But within a couple of hours, they began to experience belching, weakness, vomiting, and even sweating. Fortunately, these symptoms disappear after five to six hours, but the question remains as to what could have caused all these undesirable consequences. And there may be several reasons for this. Firstly, an overripe old mushroom will begin processes of self-decomposition, and this leads to destruction of the mushroom's own proteins, and as a result, poisons dangerous to humans may appear. Secondly, there are parasitic ascomycete fungi that can grow on mushrooms. Like in this case, it could be Hypomyces chrysospermus, which specializes in representatives of the family Boletus, or Boletus eater. These mushrooms have very small fruiting bodies of only a couple of millimeters and are easy to miss. They grow on the surface of the mushroom or on the interior within the fruiting body, in hot and humid weather with high night temperatures, they are especially dangerous. These mushrooms cover the entire bolete, they give the host a bitter taste, and they also make it poisonous. By the way, they can also infect completely young mushrooms, so their presence doesn't depend on age or the stage of development. Thirdly, in hot and humid weather, molds can quickly develop on fruiting bodies. For example, you might not even notice a small colony of penicillin or aspergillus fungi, and the poisons they contain can cause mild to severe poisoning. We also must not forget that the number one biological function of mushrooms is reduction. Regardless of the type of feeding, all mushrooms, parasites, saprophytes, or mycorrhizal mushrooms release their enzymes into the environment, destroy the substrate on which they grow, and transform complex substances into simple ones, reabsorb them back into the cell, and accumulate many substances and elements that are beneficial to us, and many that are also harmful to us. Therefore, it has been noted that in areas with an unfavorable environmental situation, the number of poisonings from edible mushrooms usually increases. Forest fires, excessive rain, excessive heat, ecological problems, can all affect the edibility of mushrooms. Well, what does our unlucky mushroom picker say? Even if you get poisoned by porcini mushrooms, how do you protect yourself from this? Should we give up mushrooms completely? Of course not. I don't encourage you to do this. You just need to remember that mushrooms never forgive the mistakes of their mushroom pickers. The first thing you want to remember is do not neglect reports of poisonings, especially in your region, that have sometimes occurred with well-known edible mushrooms. Remember that all our knowledge about mushrooms is obtained at random, since we know very little or almost nothing about mushrooms. Secondly, make sure to never cook mushrooms on the go. You need to chop the mushrooms and boil them for at least 15 minutes. Drain the water, then finish cooking the dish itself by frying or salting or marinating. Many poisons, including bolacetine, are thermophilic and are destroyed when cooked. This significantly reduces the likelihood of poisoning from edible mushrooms. Also, remember not to eat mushrooms raw. Even if you know for sure that they can be eaten raw, except in situations where you are in an emergency and it's necessary for survival, but you should not do this simply because eating raw mushrooms will not get you those beneficial nutrients that we're trying to get that are contained within the mustroom because the cells of mushrooms contain chitin-like substances in their membranes, similar to the chitin of insects. This makes nutrients and vitamins inaccessible to our body. 
but chopping them up into smaller pieces and cooking them by boiling destroys chitin, and then our stomach is able to actually extract these useful nutrients and vitamins from the mushroom. Also remember that mushrooms must undergo strict sorting before use. All spoiled, wormy, suspicious-looking mushrooms must be thrown away. I'm not going to tell you to look under a microscope, although it is always better to do so if you have one, because you can discover many interesting things. But you should always check your mushrooms carefully and smell them, and that's usually enough to tell a good one from a bad one. And lastly, monitor the weather and environmental situation on too hot or too rainy days. Be especially careful. Avoid picking mushrooms in polluted areas, urban areas, along roads, and keep an eye out for forest fires. Happy foraging!